Hi, I'm Marnie Fogelson, and along with Mahani Tiavi, I am the author of The Girl Who Heard the Music, How One Pianist in 85,000 Bottles and Cans Brought New Hope to an Island. Um, I learned of Mahani's story about three years ago on CBS Sunday Morning, and I was very interested in this environmental activist who's also a musician and I felt like I wanted to take the opportunity to share her story with the world and so that is how um, the, the story of this book began. Um, the book takes place partially on Rapa Nui which is also known as Easter Island. It's a very remote island in um, the Pacific Ocean near the closest country that it's um, is near to is Chile. So without further ado, here is the girl who heard the music. On Rapa Nui, a small island that is watched over by giant statues called Moai, it seemed to a little girl named Mahani that music was everywhere. From the lullabies that mothers sang, to the rhythm of the waves hitting the rocks, to the crickets calling to each other at dusk, music was the heart, the inanga of Rapa Nui. Sometimes visitors came to Rapa Nui. Sometimes visitors to Rapa Nui gave the children music lessons. Classical music sounded different from the ukuleles and songs Mahani knew. She fell in love with the way it made her feel and her fingers itched to play the instruments she heard. When those visitors left, they also took their instruments and the rest of their knowledge. Every time Mahani had to say goodbye, her heart drooped like a timpania flower past its prime. When Mahani was nine, a retired music teacher arrived in Rapa Nui with a piano, a real piano. It was the only piano on all of Rapa Nui and Mahani pleaded for the chance to learn. In the teacher's living room, Mahani practiced the notes until one day, click. Mahani looked at the, mu at the sheet of music before her and realized she could read it all, each and every note. After her lesson, Mahani zoomed down the hill to her house on her bicycle, her joy overflowing like bursts of hibisco blossoms. I can play anything now, Mahani thought. Well, almost. Sadly, the teacher's visa soon expired and she had to leave too. Another visitor, a great Chilean pianist, also heard Mahani perform. He was astounded that Mahani had only been playing for a few months. He knew that her talent could not fully bloom if she stayed on Rapa Nui. It was hard for Mahani to leave the flowers and the crickets and the moai on the island she loved. But just like her ancestors who were courageous boy explorers, Mahani voyaged into the unknown. She left the island. Mahani studied at conservatories around the world. She won international competitions. She played at concert halls, schools, hospitals, and jails. Music, she believed, belongs to everyone. As she played for audiences across six continents, Mahani kept Rapa Nui close to her heart. To feel at home on stage, she often wore flowers in her hair. When Mahani would come back home, she could never stay long. There wasn't even a piano on the island for her to play anymore. But the magic and music of Rapa Nui made Mahani feel whole again. Rapa Nui always had visitors, but word spread about the island's amazing moai and natural beauty. Soon, more than 100,000 tourists were finding their way to Rapa Nui every year. Mahani noticed that something else was finding its way to her homeland. Trash was everywhere. The vibrant blue water around Rapa Nui acts like a vortex trapping ocean litter and lining the beaches with it. And the tourists leave behind tons of garbage, too much for the island's only landfill. Rapa Nui is a small island, but it was in big trouble. One day, while watching the light from the setting sun kiss the Moai's magnificent faces, Mahani thought about how much work it had taken to carve the statues long ago with rock tools called toki. Carving a new future for the island would take a lot of work too, but she would help. 
Mahani joined a group of islanders who had ideas for Rapa Nui's future. Like the keys on a piano playing in harmony, the team worked together on a shared dream to build the island's first music school. Just as her ancestors used Toki to turn volcanic ash into Moai, Mahani and her team discovered a way to transform the trash polluting their island. They would build with it. With the help of volunteers from around the world, they constructed the school using approximately 12 tons of cardboard, 40,000 aluminum cans, 25,000 glass bottles, 20,000 plastic bottles, 2,500 tires. More than seven years of garbage now lives in the school's walls. When the school was finally finished, they celebrated all of the hard work in the perfect way with a concert. Although the Rapa Nui School of Music and the Arts was made with tons of trash, it's powered by nature. Solar panels turn energy from the sun into electricity and giant barrels hold rainwater for gardens. Now piano and cello music mix with ukulele and voices singing Reo Ryu. The children practice traditional Ori and Hoko steps as they go to and from their lessons. The gardens grow fruit and vegetables so the island can depend less on food from other places. Mahani hopes the land will be reforested and treated with the same respect her ancestors gave it. Music is still everywhere on Rapa Nui, and now there are new voices and sounds alongside the old. Mahani carries this music with her wherever she goes, even to concert halls and recording studios on the other side of the world. Meanwhile, pieces of Mahani's dream and her Ananga remain on Rapa Nui. They continue to bloom on this wondrous island where she first heard the music. Mahani is still playing music and um, helping her school today. So if you are interested in, in checking out some of her work, you can find um, information about the Rapa Nui School and her nonprofit, Toki Rapa Nui, um, on the internet. And you can also see videos or listen to music um, of her performing. I hope you enjoyed the story. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.